Hey everybody, I'm David Blanton with Realtree and this is the last installment of our summer archery tips and we've covered a lot of information. If you haven't seen those, go back and check them out, but obviously we're getting closer to the opening day of archery season all over the country. It's time to really start thinking about hunting conditions, simulating things like how you would hunt everything from gloves, head nets, net gaiters, shooting from a tree stand in an elevated position, shooting off a, a chair in a ground blind. Practice the way you hunt. For me, I leave my quiver attached to my Matthews bow. So not only do I practice with it attached, but I shoot practice with it with a full quiver. If you hunt and you take your quiver off when you get into the blind or up in the tree stand, don't practice with your quiver on and I keep the quiver full of arrows just to give me the exact weight that I'm going to be holding in the hunting condition. Now one thing you've got to be very careful about is practice different scenarios. For colder weather, you're going to be maybe wearing a little heavier glove. That can impact your anchor point, your, your feel for the trigger on your release, and you can see anytime you're going to be wearing gloves, regardless of how heavy they are, the trigger is going to feel different than on your bare skin. It's just going to feel different. You want to know what that feels like, so practice with your gloves on. When you put on a net gaiter, depending on your anchor point, you, you want to practice with that. You don't want to be surprised in the woods like I was in South Dakota years ago. I tried to come to full draw on a buck. I had my net gaiter was still up and it was a thick net gaiter and I came to full draw and I realized I didn't take it down and I was trying to get it to come down my face and my trigger went off on my release. Oh, I hit the trigger inadvertently on my release. And the hair went off. That was not a good scenario, but you want to be aware of these. When you get in a ground blind, you want to sit there, draw your bow back with an arrow in, of course. Don't, never draw back a bow without an arrow knock because you don't want to dry fire it. We've all heard those stories of people getting a ground blind and they didn't practice it, they weren't aware, and they come back to full draw, and sure enough, the arrow, that while their pen was in the open, the arrow went through the ground blind. That's not usually gonna turn out very well. There are several things you want to look at. A, can you draw your bow without hitting the seal? B, you can't be too close to the window because your stabilizer hitting the front wall. You gotta pick exactly where you need to be in the blind to draw back. That's why when I get in a ground blind, I always take the time to knock an arrow and I will actually pull back just to see what my limitations are of what I can get away with. Draw back. My top limb is clear. Make sure your back is straight, your bubble's level. Another point when you're practicing out of a ground blind, you want to practice shooting sitting down. This is a different shooting position from most folks. That brings in the, the other thing about peak weight on your bow. How much weight can you draw? A good measure of that is can you draw your bow back comfortably sitting down? That would be your weight. A lot of people can pull 70, 75 pounds standing up in the backyard, but you set them on a bucket in cold weather, they can't pull that comfortably. So we came in here, we hung this primal ladder stand in one of the spots that there's gonna be a lot of hunting done here this year. Got the new Bushnell Broadhead range finder. Let's see what our yellow jacket morel target is. 23.6, gonna shoot like it's 22. Whew, I don't know if I can do it. We're gonna try it. We will not come back into this location till hunting season and the wind is right. We won't come back in here. We'll leave it undisturbed. So one of the mistakes made by beginning bow hunters is if they have a shot, which is a very severe angle, they tend to just drop their arm. That's gonna change the impact point. If you're shooting from an elevated position, you want to bend at the waist so your arm doesn't drop. It's still perpendicular to your upper body torso. I hope these tips have been a big help for you this year. I have really enjoyed doing them and I hope it helps you become more successful this coming bow season.